So kind of simply put, a lipid, so a lipid, a lipid is a molecule that will dissolve into an organic solvent. So we've got an organic solvent. Let me draw in this organic solvent. And a lipid is a molecule that will dissolve into this organic solvent. And this is a kind of unique definition in the, in the organic chemistry world because most classes of molecules contain either a similar, similar functional group or, or have a similar structure like carbohydrates have a, have a specific ratio of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. And proteins have an amino group and a carboxylic acid group with a carbon side chain and, and so on. But lipids are a class defined more by this shared physical property. So when I say that lipids dissolve in organic solvents, again, nonpolar as opposed to water, so nonpolar, what I'm really pointing out is their nonpolar nature. And this is mostly attributed to a lot of carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. So carbon-carbon bonds, and I'll do these in orange, lots of carbon-carbon bonds, and then carbon hydrogen bonds as well. And I'll do these in white. Lots of, of carbon hydrogen bonds here. And, and because these carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms aren't particularly polar, there isn't a, a, a particular place where electron density is pulled to. So it's really spread out across this whole chain. And, and that makes this chain of, of carbon and hydrogen sigma bonds, let me write that in, sigma bonds, particularly kind of nonpolar and, and sets up this class. Now, even though this class of lipids, let me write that again, lipids are a little more loosely defined than others. Lipids are a large enough group that they can be broken down into smaller categories. And probably the best place to start breaking them down is by whether or not they're hydrolyzable. So big $2 word there, hydrolyzable, hydro and then lyzable hydrolyzable or or not not hydrolyzable and and what hydrolyzable means is is that things can be broken down so broken down lysed broken down by the addition of water or hydro so by adding water we can break these into smaller units and that's kind of a good break point in the bigger class of lipids and and probably the most talked about of, of the hydrolyzable lipids are triglycerols. Triglycerols. And I suppose, I suppose they get the most attention because they're the most abundant of lipids. But with triglycerols, kind of fundamentally what you have is a glycerol. So a glycerol is a three carbon chain. So three carbons bound to three hydroxyl groups. Each one has a hydroxyl group. So each of these has a hydroxyl group. That's glycerol, glycerol. And attached to glycerol, we have three fatty acid chains, one at each of these kind of separate carbon hydroxyl groups. And remember that a, a, a fatty acid is a carbon hydrogen chain, so an R group, an R group here that is capped at the end of the chain with a fatty, or with a, excuse me, a carboxylic acid functional group. That's what a fatty acid is. So we've got, oops, I wanna do it like this. We've got a, a carboxylic acid functional group at the end here. And so we've got three of these. Let me draw that in real quick. Sorry, I, I know this is a bit tedious, but let me, let me get these drawn in real quick here. And these are going to be attached at kind of each of these carbon and carbon and hydroxyl groups of this glycerol. So let me put a plus sign and then I'll kind of show you what this ends up looking like all put together. So we've got our three carbon backbone and then each is attached via an ester. So this is kind of an ester group right here. We've got oxygen bound or I mean a carbon bound to an OR group and then double bonded to this oxygen right here. And then that's the R of our chain here. So each of these is attached to a fatty acid. And so you can see that the product is a triester made of three fatty acids. So triester made of three fatty acids bound to a glycerol backbone. So a tri 
glycerol. And if all of the fatty acids are the same, so if they all have the same kind of R group at the end, we have a simple triglyceride. Uh, I'm, I'm, excuse me, a triglycerol, and, and if they're different, we have a mixed triglycerol. Now, triglycerols, as, as a group of hydrolyzable lipids, gets further broken down into saturated and unsaturated. So let me clear some space here and show you what I mean. We've got saturated, saturated, and unsaturated. And to show you what I mean here, let me draw a carbon chain really quickly for this, for this saturation concept. So I've got a carbon chain, and I'll kind of show it going on in both directions there with a, with a little arrow. But I've got this carbon chain, and, and in this carbon chain, my carbons are linked to a carbon in front of them and a carbon behind them. And what that does is it leaves each carbon with two bonding electrons. And so if those bonding electrons are taken up by hydrogen, so with hydrogen here, drawn in my hydrogens, if, if all of those carbons are bound to as many hydrogens as possible, then, then this carbon chain is saturated with hydrogen, saturated with hydrogen atoms. And you can also see that, that this chain is full of single bonds or sigma, sigma bonds. Now, if it's unsaturated, let me draw another carbon chain here. If it's unsaturated, there's, there's a carbon uh, that's the, or, or multiple carbons really that are bound to less hydrogens than their maximum. So they're bound to less than two or so hydrogens. So let me show you why that might be. So I've got a carbon bound here and then if I have a double bond to this carbon and keep going, then what I've created are, are a couple carbons here, this one and this one, that can only bind one hydrogen because carbon can only bond to four different atoms. It only has four bonding electrons. So this carbon has as many hydrogens as possible and these two carbons have as many hydrogens as possible. This, this last one on the end would have three three hydrogens, but this carbon right here is bound to one less hydrogen because it's double bonded to this carbon. So this carbon chain is unsaturated. And you can kind of associate that in the context of, of a fatty acid with having pi bonds. This is a pi bond right here, a double bond. Because these double bonds in naturally occurring fats are always in the cis or, or Z, position, they cause little kinks in the chain. So we've got kind of a, a kink going on in this chain. And what happens is that makes it harder for these, uh, for these unsaturated triglycerols to pack together and it results in a lower melting point. Or in other words, these melt with less heat. So typically unsaturated triglycerols are liquid at room temperature and we call them oils. So unsaturated triglycerols are oils, and, and that's different than you can see these saturated triglycerols, which can pack together a little more tightly with their straight chains, and they take a little more heat then to melt. So typically, these are solid. These saturated are solid at room temperature, and we call these fat. So an example of, of an oil might be olive oil, olive oil oil and a, and a good example of fat is really uh, of this saturated fat might be something like butter 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 is is a solid at room temperature now just kind of as a little fun fact if if you were trying to make an unsaturated fat into a saturated fat say you you want to make a liquid fat into a, a solid fat you'd want to saturate it you can do that by hydrogenating this bond or by adding hydrogen and heat which is gonna break this double bond and allow you to add on an additional hydrogen. And that's, that's a process that the food industry actually uses pretty frequently for various reasons. Well, when you do that, you make some artificial double bonds in the process, um, which result in, in trans bonds, all naturally occurring unsaturated fats are in this cis orientation, and when you when you artificially hydrogenate them, you actually end up with a couple of trans 
trans double bonds. And, and that's actually the process that, that results in, in trans fat production. And, and trans fats are, are the fats on food labels that you typically try to avoid because of their harmful effects in, in the human body. But that's just kind of a, a little fun fact aside. That's where trans fats come from. Now, in a cell, the main function of triglycerols are energy storage. So let me draw a cell. Got a cell with a membrane and a nucleus and some little cell parts here. The main function of triglycerols are energy, energy storage. And what allows triglycerols to function as energy storage is, is the fact that they're chock full of carbon and hydrogen bonds, which are perfect for combustion reactions. So what you have essentially is an alkane, just like, um, let's say, for example, isooctane, which is in gas. And, and alkanes are great for combustion reactions, just like combustion reactions that, that power your car. So, for example, if, if you have an alkane, like the simplest one would be CH4-methane plus oxygen, two oxygens, is going to give you some carbon dioxide gas and some water, but most importantly is going to give you heat energy. So that's where the energy comes from in the form of fats, just like the combustion reaction in your car that's creating power. And in fact, that's why you hear about some cars being converted to run on vegetable oil, because vegetable oils have lots of alkanes that are perfect for this combustion reaction. So in our bodies, triglycerols store about nine kilocals of energy, so nine kilocals, which is more energy than, than even carbohydrates or protein store. They each store about four kilocals. So really one of the main functions in our body of triglycerols, let me kind of go back up here, of triglycerols, which are a type of hydrolyzable lipids, is energy storage.